Hello, Joel Tavman here at West Hill Golf Club and today we are reviewing one of the more exciting and unique products on the market in 2018. This is the Vertical Groove Driver. Very aptly named because as you can see, the grooves on the face of it are vertical compared to conventional drivers which either don't have any grooves at all or the grooves they do have are smaller on the edges and the heel and toe and are horizontal. So. It's an interesting concept that's been brought out here. There's also a new fairway we've been launched recently, but we've been testing the driver um, today in a number of different scenarios, which I'm going to talk you through in a moment. But let's talk about how it works. So basically, this has been making waves on the, the senior PJ Tour, the Champions Tour, sorry. It's one of the straightest drivers on the Champions Tour. And vertical grooves say that these their unique design is should reduce spin slightly for extra distance and also help the ball fly straighter and in fact increase accuracy by I think 40% compared to conventional drivers. So it's some big claims they're making with this that you know they're keen to stress it's not a gimmick. You know there is genuine performance uh, to come from this and I wanted to try it out. So I was at the PGA show uh, last week and I got custom fitted for this driver so I've got it in eight degrees which is the, the loft they recommended. I've got it in an extra stiff Aldilla RIP shaft. So I tested this in two parts. So I went to Foresight Sports HQ in Guildford and got some dry ball data, controlled data using premium golf balls in my spec. And I also tested it up against my Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero, my gamer, if you like, as they tend to call it, in the back weight setting. So 14 grams of weight in the back, which is how I would employ it on the course. So I've got some data for each, which I'm gonna share with you in a moment. And then I took it out on the golf course here at West Hill, played uh, three different holes, hit balls off the tee with this one and this one to see if there was any noticeable differences in distance or accuracy out on the course in a playing situation. So let's start with the Foresight Sports GC quad data first of all, see what we got. So let's dive into the numbers. I've got my iPad here with the numbers on for the uh, vertical groove driver. You notice I've got the stickers on the face, so I've got some club data for these drivers as well, which should give us some insight into the extra performance that you've got, if any, uh, between the two drivers. So we'll start with the uh, vertical groove driver. Average ball speed, this is with 10 counting shots, uh, 152 miles an hour, which is really, really good. Uh, an average carry of 274 yards with this vertical groove driver, which is around about where I am. Day to day, I'm anywhere between 272 and 278. Just depends on how well I'm swinging, how strong I'm feeling, etc., etc. But that's very good. Got a really long shot out there at 278, and the shortest one was 270. Accuracy was okay. There's quite a few shots that were above 10 yards offline, but all in all, they're all fine in the fairway or the semi rough and distance and overall performance was impressive. You can see the spin was nice and low, 1800, uh, with the launch of 15 degrees. So about where I would want to be, perhaps the spin's a touch low, but uh, launching fairly high, given it's an eight degree driver, um, that's pretty impressive. So looking at the club data, that you can see my average club head speed was 107 miles an hour with a smash of 1.42. Um, and then if we compare this to the Callaway, so the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero, now this is in nine degrees, so slightly more loft, you can see the ball speed was slightly higher at 108 miles an hour uh, and the smash factor actually came down to 1.41. I do feel like in this testing I actually didn't hit the Callaway as well as I did the vertical groove driver. I hit the vertical groove driver first so I might have been feeling a little bit stronger compared to this but you look at the ball data for the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero. Uh, ball speed was exactly the same, 152 uh, and the carry distance was exactly the same at 274 yards so there really wasn't anything in it. The spin was exact, pretty much exactly the same, hovering around that 1800 mark. It did launch a bit higher, which you would expect because I've got a little bit more loft there and there's probably a bit more back weighting on that with that 14 gram weight right in the back. And as a result, it did peak a lot higher, 38 yards. So uh, higher ball flight, higher launch, but the same speed and the same carry distance. Worth noting on the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero, my longest shot was also 278 yards, but that did roll out to 301 compared to the longest shot with the vertical groove driver which rolled out to 299. So total distance, the Callaway did slightly edge it on, those, on that longest drive, but average wise, they're both exactly the same, which is fascinating to see. Just goes to show out the middle, you know, there's not much between these two drivers. So even though I actually felt like I didn't strike the Callaway as well as I did the vertical groove driver, you can see looking at the club data, I felt like the strikes were slightly more in the heel. 
um, compared to the Callaway. It was interesting that actually the dispersion with the Callaway was probably better. You see much lower numbers overall there with the Rogue Sub-Zero, which did lead to a slight increase in accuracy. But so it was interesting to see if that would translate out on the golf course. So before we talk about the performance of the drivers, let's talk about the looks of these drivers because they are very, very different. There's obviously a lot going on with this vertical groove driver. You've got this hexagonal textured area on the top, which doesn't have a performance benefit in terms of clubbed speed. It's purely cosmetic, which makes you wonder why they've done it because it is a bit quirky and you know it could put people off. You've got that green strip there running through the middle to help with uh, positioning the ball in the center of the face. It looks like it's more lofted than it is. In fact, this is eight degrees and it looks more lofted than the Callaway that I was using. It's obviously very short from front to back because it's got a very deep face and it's 450 cc. So uh, definitely has a more workable feel to it compared to the Callaway, which is, has a larger profile at address. In fact, this probably has one of the smallest profiles at address of a lot of drivers on the market, if not all of them. But that said, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I kind of like the kind of modern funky look to it. It's not going to suit everyone's eye, but you know, looks wise, it's not too bad. Certainly looks uh, very cutting edge and very workable um, compared to a lot of drivers on the market. So I took both these drivers out on the golf course, uh, played three different holes, hitting drives with both this driver and my current gamer, the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero driver. Starting with the second hole here at West Hill Golf Club, um, actually hit both of them pretty good. Uh, the Callaway was in the middle of the fairway and the vertical groove driver was just down the right in the semi-rough. Uh, both on a similar distance uh, and I hit them quite well, so there wasn't really much in it. I would say obviously hit the Callaway slightly better, which is why it's in the middle of the fairway. Uh, moving on to the third hole here at West, West Hill, um, similar story, I hit the Callaway slightly better, I think just because it's my current driver, I was a bit used to how it was kind of performing and felt in the swing, so um, hit that one down the middle and the vertical groove driver was down in the left side of the fairway, hit that one slightly out of the toe actually, and as a result it was a couple of yards behind the Callaway, uh, but interestingly I hit it on the 17th hole, which is par 5 here at West Hill, right off the back tee, so I could hit driver, because otherwise you run out of fairway. Um, and it was right into the sun and I couldn't see where they were going and I hit the vertical groove driver first, first felt like I hit it really well but I didn't see where it went hit the Callaway afterwards and I struck that really nicely and felt like it was going down the middle couldn't quite see got down there and the vertical groove driver was right in the middle of the fairway and the Callaway driver was in the right semi uh, on a similar distance probably actually slightly further so the on-course testing was kind of inconclusive in that strike played a big part in the performance and resulting golf shots, but what was interesting is that well struck, this driver seems to go as well as the Callaway. And I think, you know, drivers these days, they tend to all be very similar from the middle, and I was surprised at how well this went from the middle. Uh, but I wouldn't notice from the on-course testing that this went any straighter or any longer. In fact, the Callaway seemed to be a little bit straighter and a little bit longer in the on-course testing scenarios that I've done here. But over a wider spectrum of shots, perhaps over a few rounds, I might see uh, a, you know, the, the clubs kind of coming together a little bit more. Um, but on the whole, this vertical groove driver, it's not a gimmick. You know, It's not there to make up the numbers. It's a genuine performing golf club. Uh, the looks of it are a bit funky, but if you can get past that, it's a very good performing driver. It comes in at £399 uh, retail price in the UK, and it's a really good option. Do the vertical grooves work? I'm going to have to say they don't seem to have any impact on accuracy or distance for me, but Nonetheless, the overall performance was package was impressive and I really enjoyed using it. It feels really solid. solid. Uh, the sound of it is quite loud compared to the Callaway. I'd say it's got more of a tinny sound, but it feels really, really solid and stable at impact. And the shape of it does seem to encourage a bit of workability as well. So lots of positive things to say about this vertical groove driver, actually. Um, the fact that it was right up there with the Callaway on the launch monitor was really surprising for me. Um, so yeah, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think of the ver vertical groove driver. Are you going to give it a test? Are you going to give it a try? Uh, make sure you check out the Golf Monthly website for all reviews of all the drivers on the market in 2018. But for now, from West Hill, it's goodbye. <laughs>